The Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show is on the air and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and WAAM 1600 Ann Arbor, Michigan. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, it's the beginning of Season 3, and we've got a jam-packed show. We're going to talk about starting seeds indoors, what winter sowing is. Our guest, Julie Thompson Adolph, is with us. She's the author of Starting and Saving Seeds, plus your garden questions. It's all jam-packed in the next hour, so let's begin right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program. Whether you are in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, or Southeast Michigan, listening anywhere via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com radio tab under the uh, under the radio tab there, or podcast replay or in studio video replay. So happy you have joined us on the program today. There is. Uh, I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, gardening partner. Holly Baird. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us, one being, or several being, the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us during the show and after the show. You can reach us by the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard paint email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access IVOrganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com or you can tweet us using hashtag TWVG or Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414 414- Three six eight nine three one one, and you can also tweet us at any time at hashtag twvg show. Our Twitter handle is twvg show. So we've got a lot of content here for season three, and we're appreciative of you coming, uh, you coming on and spending a little bit of your day with us. So we're going to talk about starting seeds indoors and. To do this right, there are techniques in which we need to follow. When we start Seeds Indoors, this segment is sponsored by Happy Leaf LED. Happy Leaf LED is... Uh, Happy Leaf LED is probably made in the USA, a grow light for beginners or advanced indoor gardeners. They have a universal LED recipe that means you can just turn it on and watch your leafy greens, herbs, vegetables, any plant really grow and thrive. It's the anywhere, anytime garden, a professional grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors, just plug in and grow. For more information, you can visit happyleafled.com. So with that being said, the Happy Leaf LED is a great tool. We'll talk about growing lights uh, in a moment when we talk about starting seeds indoors. And uh, we want to get into the seed starting aspect of it. But we want to start the seeds off right indoors, Holly. And to do this, we want to have what? Well, we want to have, first of all, the you want to make sure that you are starting the seeds indoors at the right time. That's important. Right, like onions, 10 to 12 weeks, peppers, 10 to 12 weeks before your last average frost date, tomatoes, 6 to 8 weeks. So there's a lot of charts online which you can look at. So, for example, let's talk about um, onion seeds and leeks, which we just started, uh, what, two weeks ago? Yes. And you could actually you could have started them a little bit sooner. But the nice thing about starting your onion seeds indoors is that if you seed them and seed them heavy, then you'll have a lot of onions to grow. And, and there's three different, you just can't just go get onion seeds and start them. 
No. You ha- there's a certain category in which you need to know based on your geographical area. That's correct, Joey. So what you want to do is you want to figure out where you are in the United States. And if you are north of the central portion of the United States, so kind of draw a line along where like Springfield, Illinois is. Um, higher than that, you are going to grow short day onions. Or long day onions, I'm sorry. Yeah. Long day onions. So if you're north, long day. Yeah, northern portions of the United States. in the middle portion, you're going to grow neutral day or midday. And if you're in the south, you're going to grow short day. And that might not seem right, but it's because during, the people in the north have longer days during the summer. And if you try to grow a long day in a short day area or short day in a long day, you will get an onion. You just may not get a whole lot of bulb development on that onion. So let's talk about the basic understanding of starting seeds indoors correctly here by first the material in which we're starting our seeds in. Yeah, you also, you also want to make sure you're starting fresh seeds because seeds lose 10% of their germination every year. So if you have seeds that are five years old, you're only going to get probably about 50% germination. It, and and then, you know, you don't want to throw them out, but tr- double, triple them up. If you t- t- typically put one tomato seed in a hole, for example, or a, a seed cup or whatever, put two or three at, to likely increase your chances of getting at least one to germinate. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about potting soil because we get this question. Well, we're going to talk about containers Let's talk first. about containers first. Okay. So a lot of times on Pinterest you'll see this, oh, start your seeds in an egg carton, a uh, little eggshell, or start your seeds in a... A lemon ice- skin. Ice, <laughs> ice cream cone. Link. Ice cream yeah, cone. No. That's, that's cute. It's really cute. It makes cute little blog pictures, but it's not practical because your seed eventually is going to grow, and that means its root system is going to grow, and you're basically cutting its root system off. Right. It's going to grow for about three days, run out of so- uh, run out of moisture, you're going to forget to water, it's going to die. So with anything that we're starting in indoors, the more volume of material you're planting in, the longer that ma- that plant can survive when you forget to or not water. Mm-hmm. Right. So you want to, that's one thing, is that you want to make sure that you have enough space for the plant to grow, that you have able so that it has some water or moisture. And also, if you have to transplant it, maybe you don't want to transplant that plant. So maybe you do want to start it in a larger container. That's right. So let's talk about the materials. One, we all see the expandable peat pellets that people choose to use. You put water in them, they expand like a sponge. That's fine. That's great. Here's the downside, too. It's convenient. One, at the time of planting, you have to remove the netting because the netting doesn't biodegrade as they in- indicate that it should. Secondly, there's no nutritional nutrient value in that peat pellet. It's peat moss. So at some point, about three to four weeks into your plant germination, things are looking good, and then things start going downwards. That's because the plant has used up all the natural nutrient uh, nutrient value that has been stored in the seed coat that nature has designed. Mm-hmm. And now it's looking for nutrients. And just because you're watering it doesn't mean that it's getting the nutrient value that it's required to develop and grow correctly. You need to supplement, if you're using peat pellets, with an organic or inorganic liquid fertilizer at about a quarter of the strength. We can get a wrap get around this if we use a potting mix that contains some type of slow-release fertilizer. Right. So you want some good potting soil, and you might ask, what is good potting soil? How do you know if it's good potting soil? If I go to my local drugstore and I find some potting soil, is that good? Do I have to go to the garden center and buy the expensive stuff? What's the difference? Well, first of all, what you want to look for in good potting soil is something like slow-release fertilizer. You you can fertilize your own seedlings, that's fine, but the benefit of the slow-release fertilizer is so that you don't have to think about that. Yeah, less effort, more production is what we're looking for. So what are some ingredients, when we flip the bag over, what are we looking for? What is the key things that we should find inside of a bag of potting mix? So that one is the slow-release fertilizer. The other is peat moss or cocoa core. And what that is is it just um, kind of adds to the soil, uh, uh, increases drainage. Uh, It it holds moisture. Holds moisture, but it also increases proper drainage as well. No, that's perlite and vermiculite. Right, well, that too. Yeah. Um, and then the perlite and vermiculite is for the, is for the drainage. Makes your soil a bit fluffier. And then organic matter. So you could do plant-based, animal-based um, compost. So that's what you're looking for. You want to avoid heavily a heavy amount of pine bark or wood chip type of uh, items in that bag because they're not fully broke down. They're going to cause a lot of air gaps. They're not going to have nutrient value or water retention capabilities right. in that 
So, so when we're talking about plant-based or animal-based compost, it could be anything from leaves to just uh, some sort of plant-based compost, like you would have your own plant-based compost. Animal-based sometimes is like chicken manure, um, sometimes even like turkey manure. So what other... What are well, which is fine. Those manures are fine if they are derived from an organic source. A lot of these companies will just go to a mega farm buy that manure, that the turkey or chicken droplings, that have been fed with GMO crops and been filled with pesticides, or, uh, uh, medication and all this um, other stuff that's not good. So that, that's what you want to look for in your potting soil. Uh, once we've established the type of potting soil, and here's what, you, with the potting soil, you see the variations in pricing at the garden center. You pay for what you get. If you see a bag on sale for a buck ninety five, there's a reason why it's a dollar ninety five because it's El Cheapo, poor uh, material in it, a lot of filler, sand like uh, material that doesn't retain moisture or hold any nutri- nutrient value whatsoever. And we have purchased uh, in years past, we have purchased materials like that, and we would have had more success growing in sand because the water just permeates through it so quickly. There's no retention of any type of... It, it really is even a poor medium to even grow in. Right. So that's definitely something you want to think about. Let's talk about watering since uh, we're talking about water retention and, and how often. Sure. So watering is something that you can definitely overdo and underdo, with, especially with your seedlings, because you have different size containers. Uh, maybe it depends on the dryness of your home, where you're growing your seeds, things like that, you know, what the humidity level is. So one thing you want to do is we do um, wet paper towel on the top of our seedling plants when we first start them. Prior to the germination. Prior, yeah, yes. prior to the germination. And that gives you an advantage because you can then spritz that wet paper towel to help keep the top of the the uh, container where the soil top is, the surface, moist. Otherwise, we do a lot of bottom watering. Bottom watering is where you let the container set in a tray, water, and the water naturally wicks up into the container... Uh, if your container can, you have to have a container that can, that has holes. We use root maker grow trays uh, that has a, uh, holes in the bottom, and they air prune the root so you don't get that wrap around issue, and it wicks the water up naturally. So when you're not watering from the top and disrupting or disturbing or splattering soil on the plants themselves, so you can do that. The proper time of watering is when the container is damp or n- almost dry. You'll see this more readily visible whenever the plants are growing versus before they germinate. As they're growing, you'll see all of a sudden they get real floppy and they nearly fall over because they're dehydrated. We want to water prior to that. And we want to water, if we bottom water, we want to water and allow it to wick up. Not so much where the plants are stagnantly setting in water. It's not a swamp or a bog. We want to water, hydrate the soil, and then remove the excess water that is coming off of the, that's in the tray. Because if you set, if you let them set in water, it just does not work. It will kill the plant because plants need a dry and wet cycle as well as the oxygen in the soil is what these roots need as well. So, once let, let's finish up the segment here with where do we put our seedlings at? Well, there's a lot of options. One is that you have to think about they need light. So if, if you get a grow light, like a Happy Leaf LED, a lot of people do like a baker's rack type thing because that way you can put the grow light at the top, let the baker's rack, because it has a lot of, it's just basically made of wire or metal shelving, metal shelving yeah. um, so that light can go through. Otherwise, we you do underneath some tables. With the with the grow light, if you have a south facing window or even an east or west facing window, you can do that. You can put it in a basement. People will say, "Well, what about? Can I put it on top of the refrigerator?" Well, yes, you can at the time of planting to keep the soil warm because there's a lot of heat that comes off the back of the refrigerator. Here's what you want to remember that the plants are up there because you'll put them up there they're out of sight out of mind you'll forget about them i mean we got some like three-year-old cereal on top of our fridge i'm pretty sure so. yeah so you, yeah. you'll forget about it and they'll dry out they won't germinate because you forgot about them but yeah that's a good place but yeah south facing window underneath the happy leaf lady do you need a heat mat in order to germinate your seeds no, no. Def- you don't. Uh, maybe for certain seeds like hot peppers or something, I think you do. Well, if you're if you're in an environment in which the ad- ambient temperature 
is very cold, yes, like a garage or an unconditioned basement or unconditioned garage, if you're growing them in the corner of your bedroom, grow room, playroom, wherever, your house most likely is between 68 and 75 degrees. That warmth will go into the soil and allow the plants to germinate at a timely fashion. That You won't need any additional heat uh, for that. Um, so that that's how we can get our seedlings started um, in the grow, uh, it started indoors off right. Now, if you're starting your seeds, if, if you don't want to start your seeds, you don't have to start your seeds. You can go ahead and purchase them at your local garden center, and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, they're already done for you. One thing we'll touch on real briefly before we go to break is, and we'll touch on this later on in the season, but when it's time to take them outside, oh, it's, we're going to plant them. You can't just take them right outside. You have to go through what is called a hardening off process. Okay. Yeah, what, yeah. Explain, oh, so explain hardening a hardening off, off process. Oh. Um, hardening off is basically where you take your, so when you take your seeds outside to plant them, you don't want to, um, you don't want to just put them directly in the ground. That you don't want to bring them from that night. They're nice, comfy home into the elements. So what you do is every day, for about a week before you're going to put them outside, is you acclimate them to the temperature, and you do this at the peak of the day, right? Yes. Um, and uh, if you can adequate, yeah, yeah. If you can, if you can't, you could just do it right when you get home from work, and you just increase the time. So you start with like an hour, and then throughout the week, you just add more time. Eventually, moving to overnight. Absolutely, uh, and, and then by that time, within a week's period. They will be able to stay outside. You have to do this according to the time of year and make sure you look at the long-range forecast and and uh, make sure that that works for the time. You just don't want to set them out if it's going to be 35 degrees. Uh, make, make sure, you know, 35 degrees. Do that right. Well, that's how we start seeds off indoors. If you have any questions, certainly email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. When we come back... We're going to talk about what is winter sowing. Is it good? Is it bad? Will it work for you? You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag... TWVG. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff catering a bill open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 Planting Tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants, will not wash off, and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B B. Ex.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. 
Be sure you're growing the right kind of onion. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Know the type of onion you're growing for your area. Not all onions are the same. Onions have short, neutral, and long day varieties. Short in the south, neutral in the center of the United States, and long day in the north. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family-owned and operated. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the back-breaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps, Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Some people believe gardening or make gardening out to be so difficult like... The main winding was the normal lotus o deltoid type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator. It's real simple. Get a seed, get some soil, put the seed in the soil, water it, and it's going to grow. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Holly Baird. It's pretty simple, just like getting a fertilizer that's all natural that will work for you with a company that believes in what you're doing in your backyard. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge natural organic garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family that is founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information on where to buy. Absolutely. Uh, Might as well work with a company that believes in your values as well. What is winter sowing and is it right for you? Uh, Well, Holly, what is winter sowing? We've heard this term and maybe those who are not very in in, enthralled in the world of gardening may have never heard this term and are kind of confused to what it is. Sure. So winter sowing is growing, uh, starting your seeds outdoors in the winter. So this is generally done in like a miniature greenhouse. Um, you basically can take like an old uh, milk or water jug, like, a, like you want the gallon size, and then you would cut the top off. 
put your seeds in the bottom and then like tape or whatever, affix the top back on and that way, and then you have the lid. With a hinge. Yeah, like a little hinge. And, and when we talk about a miniature greenhouse, we're not talking about going to the garden center and buying a greenhouse you it's put It's like inside. a little terrarium type exactly. thing that you're making, yeah. yeah. Um, and you're going to do that outside. You put them outside, then they go through what's called their stratification process. So a lot of these seeds need cold hours to re-germinate. So they do that themselves. To reset. To reset, yeah. basically. They do that themselves in this process and then the spring when as the day starts to warm the seeds are, they start to wake up and bam there you go you have your seeds well it, it sounds great just like everything on paper everything seems wonderful great berries and sunshine and, and unicorns flying through the sky right the, just like everything in gardening there is a, a downside to it and we'll touch on that in a moment but what are some positive aspects if one was to practice this particular method of seed starting because that's what it is we're starting seeds outdoors and not fussing with grow lights or indoors and watering all this other stuff. Right. So that that's so there's some benefits. Um, it's simple. It's efficient. So plant you, forget. But <laughs> plant and forget. Basically, um, there are some babysitting. We'll get to that in the, the cons part. Um, and. You don't have to worry about leggy seedlings because they're growing outdoors. And so if you have leggy seedlings... And explain what legginess is. Sure. So legginess is when you start your seeds and then they start to try to grow towards the light and they get really long stems. They stretch. And that's what can occur if we don't have a grow light um, uh, close to the light, uh, close to the plants. So when you start your seeds indoors, if you use a traditional tube light and not a LED light, like a happy leaf LED light... Uh, so this, has a good another intensity. good one is you don't have to harden off your seedlings. I know a lot of people are confused by this or they just don't feel they have the time or they're afraid they might leave their seedlings out too long or something to harden them off. But well, we talked about it in the first segment. Yeah. Just briefly touch on that again for people who may be tuning in. What is hardening off? Hardening off is when you um, you take your seedlings outside and you acclimate them to the weather before you're ready to plant them outside. Yeah, just like uh, jumping into an ice cold pool, you tense up. You can handle it because you're an adult. Uh, the plants can't do that. They're baby plants. You've got to get them transitioned from warmth indoors to the ambient temperature outdoors, whatever that might be at the appropriate time that they need to go out over a week's period. So that that's another thing uh, about the winter sowing. Now, disclaimer, Holly and I never have done winter sowing. We've looked no. into it. <laughs> we haven't, and, but there's, there's whole face group. Facebook groups for it, YouTube channels, web- websites, yes. whatnot. So it's a thing. Like it's not like this brand new thing. People have been doing it for a long time. Um, another thing is that it saves space indoors. If you have a small home and you don't have space, or maybe you have like cats or dogs or children that might mess with your seedlings, this is something that you could easily do outside. Now, when we talk about planting these seeds in this milk jug or miniature greenhouse terrarium, we're not putting one seed per milk jug. We are planting dozens of seeds, dozens of tomato plants, pepper plants, eggplants in this one container. And then when they get large enough, we will extract them and then plant them outdoors at the appropriate time. So it's not just a one, and not not. So you don't think you have to have eight hundred milk jugs if you're planting your garden in a winter sowing situation. Now, there are we went over some of the pros on this. What are some of the cons that are not good? Sure. So one of the disadvantage is that it's a one-time deal. Mm-hmm. If your seeds don't germinate, you have to go buy starts. Like if you are if you're starting your seeds indoors and they don't germinate, you know within like ten days. Right. What is is that pretty much the biggest hit on this for the uh, for the cons? Um, so another thing is seedlings aren't always as big as the ones that you put under the grow lights, so they're going to be smaller seedlings. But that's not necessarily the worst thing. But that's something that you should know. You have to be very patient. So you have to realize that a you're taking a risk. B something might not germinate. C if you do perennials, um, they might not germinate, and that's frustrating because a lot of people germinate perennials because they want them to come back year after year. Um, you have to be patient, and then during winters where temperatures can vary, you kind of have to babysit. If there's, a, especially like we just had a polar vortex, you don't want to leave your seedlings outside in the polar vortex. Um, so if you started this, some people do start it in January. And the fluctuation of yeah, temperatures, the fluctuation these temperature. plants will start growing, and then boom, especially, get Yeah, especially um, if, as we move into into March and it gets warmer. Yeah, and, and and then you're you're all over the place. When you start them indoors, you know where they're at. You know when to take them out. You know when to harden them off. You know what you have, 
and you don't have to worry about the cold, hot, cold, hot, and then starting too soon. Well, another thing that you can use is a product that's all natural. Wouldn't you want to use a product in your yard that doesn't kill natives, doesn't kill bees, doesn't hurt ladybugs, only focuses on the bugs that it's actually uh, you're actually wanting to get rid of? Are you looking to control common insect pests like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles, and their larvae without harming the good insects? Phylum Bioproducts does just that with potent and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both a- adult and larva stages of susceptible pests. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing harm to the rest of the environment. Visit PhylumBioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y L-L-O-M Bioproducts products.com so uh we talked about that we talked about the the winter sowing if it's something for you if it's not something for you uh we want to uh you know look at all options when it comes to um starting seeds starting seeds and it, sometimes you just don't have time and there's no shame in going to the garden center and buying your seeds but there's many advantages to starting your own seeds right there and is we will we'll lead into that when we talk to julie yeah coming up next on the program uh we've got an author julie thomas adolph she is uh a uh, she's got a book about growing and or, uh, starting and saving seeds. So we've talked about planting seeds. We're going to talk to the expert when it comes to that. Uh, you can always join us anytime on the website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. You can also send us an email at any time at twvgshow at gmail.com. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with a seed starting and saving expert right after this. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. question email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. 
MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. World's CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? How long are seeds good for? It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herbs, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. There are a lot of variables when it comes to answering the question, how long are your seeds good for? Whether you've purchased them from MI Gardener, another location, or saved them yourself. One key variable is how were the seeds stored? In a cool, dry place? In the back seat of your car because you're going to your garden? Or somewhere in between? Seeds that are stored in a cool, dry place, like the crisper of your fridge, have a longer shelf life than those that are not stored in a cool, dry place. Typically, a good rule of thumb, every year that the seed is not planted, they lose 10% of germination rate. So the pack will greatly decrease in viability over time. Another thing is, not all seeds will keep as long as other ones. Some tomatoes and melon seeds can last 5 to 10 years if stored properly. Other seeds, onions, parsnips, can last 1 to 2 years. There's many charts online, but do not take them as gospel, but as a reference on a time frame in which the seeds need to be used. Store them properly and purchase what you feel that you're going to need. Don't overbuy just because it's a sell. In the long run, if you're not going to be able to plant those seeds, you're actually wasting seeds and wasting money. So keep your seeds in a cool, dry place and they'll last longer. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herbs, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Dot com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So we want to welcome Blue Mills back to the program as a sponsor, coming back for the third year as the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. And they have a new program in place at Blue Mills this year. Yep, classes in session. Register for Blue Mills free gardening courses. You can get five dollars in Blue Mill bucks for every course you attend. And if you attend all six, you receive your class of twenty nineteen Blue Mills Green Thumb certification. You can register at bluemills.com and as always you can visit them at forty nine thirty West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton, or call four one four two eight two forty two twenty. That's bluemills.com. We'll be there uh, talking about planting herbs and vegetables in April. So join us there, too. It's a lot of fun. This is the Garden Lady, C.L. Fernari, taking you back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joe and Holly Bear. Let's go to the IV Organics 3 one Plant Garden Hotline and bring in our next guest, Holly. Julie Thompson Adolph is an obsessive organic gardener, nature nut, adventurer, animal advocate, and seed lover. As an experienced gardener and garden writer, Julie is best known for her brand and blog, Garden Delights. She practices seed to se- table to seed approach, starting her plants from seeds, creating delicious meals and beautiful bouquets from the harvest, and then saving the seeds to plant in next year's gardens. Her new book, Starting and Saving Seeds, Grow the Perfect Vegetables, Fruit, Herbs, and Flowers for Your Garden, is available in bookstores or online at Amazon or uh, and be in uh, Barnes and Noble right your favorite online book retailer uh, so welcome to the program Julie 
Hi, Holly and Joey. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us, to talk to us and educate Holly and myself and all of our listeners about starting and saving seeds correctly. Thanks. Uh, it's really, um, so it really kind of gets addicting after a while, too. I mean, I'm a complete seed addict, and once you start learning how to save your own seeds, it's it really turns into kind of a fun obsession. Well, let's start with the basic question that maybe an, uh, an uneducated or hobby a gardener might ask, why, why do I need to save seeds? Why, why is that important? Why can't I just go to my gardener or my, my, my seed store and purchase the seeds I want each year? Sure. I mean, there are a couple reasons, you know, that, that's really um, a great idea to start saving seeds. There's kind of the whole overarching reason, which is, you know, in the past um, – 200 years, we've lost 94% of our, our food crops, basically, our fruits and our vegetables. So there's that whole idea of preserving biodiversity and really um, maintaining foods that are, you know, culturally important, too. So not only are you saving, like, delicious food, but it's also kind of a cultural thing that, you know, you also want to preserve that biodiversity for our Earth. So that's one reason. Um, a lot of people say, you know, it's it's great to save seeds because you save a lot of money, which is true unless you're a seed addict like me and have to try every variety out there. So I save a ton of seeds, but I'm always constantly, you know, looking for a weird heirloom that I haven't grown yet. So, you know, for me it's not that true, but, you know, for normal people it probably is. You do save a lot of money doing it. And then, of course, there's that whole idea of self-sufficiency, you know, the um, the whole idea of having that, seed to table and then back to seed and into your garden approach, you know, for folks that are into homesteading or just that that sense of pride you have of growing your own food to feed your family and, you know, can show off to your friends and neighbors when you prepare a great meal for them and be be like, hey, yeah, I started the seeds back in February in my basement. So, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons. It's a lot of fun. Now, you said we've lost 94% of the food source that uh, over the last 200 years. When when you refer to that, does that mean, like, for example, there was a 1,000 types of green or 100 types of green beans that were uh, 200 years ago, and now we've really only got six varieties that has not been lost over time? Is that kind of the, the math or, or uh, equation? Kind of like together? that. Okay. Kind of like that. I mean, and I think some folks have done a great job really tracking down families that have, you know, a certain variety. Um, and, like, I think about in South Carolina, there's a watermelon that was basically kind of going, you know, not necessarily extinct, but really difficult to find. And the Bradford family, they are the family that's known for preserving that seed, and people now go to them to try to kind of grow that in their garden and, you know, maintain that that plant to make sure that we don't lose that one too that's just like a for instance so absolutely so what is the biggest misconception about saving seeds probably that it's really challenging that it's super difficult to do and it's not but the biggest misconception i think people do is they think end of season yeah i'm gonna go and save seeds from my garden but if you're really trying to work hard to you know preserve um, pure seed you need to start thinking about saving seeds early when your plants are starting to bloom because that's when we end up with cross-pollination. And it's, you know, it sounds so difficult and it's not at all. It can be as simple as you need to isolate those blooms so they're not cross-pollinated between, for instance, peppers or if you're growing um, lettuce, for instance. People grow a lot of varieties of lettuce because who wants to eat just, you know, butter crunch? So you need to maintain those flowers um, that they aren't cross-pollinated with other varieties. And that can be as simple as putting a really fine mesh bag over that flower, marking it, saying, these are the seeds I'm going to save, letting it, you know, develop into, in the instance of lettuce, develop into the seeds, the flowers and the seeds, and then taking that bag off. Or with the pepper, you know, as soon as it starts to set fruit, then you know it's okay to take that bag off but leave that little tag on there because those that's the fruit that you're going to save seeds from that's not cross-pollinated. But that's all in the book. I mean, it sounds really challenging, but it's not if you have a resource that you can look up and say, okay, here's what I need to do. So, it's you know, it's not hard. It's certainly not hard, and it's a lot of fun. So for people who are having problems germinating, as Holly and I do, herbs such as rosemary or lavender, what are we doing wrong? What are some tips that you can advise all of us on to get better germination rates on some of these hard uh, seeds to, to sprout? It's 
patience. Oh my gosh. There are, I mean, there are tips and tricks to do it. But I am the same way. I mean, when I don't see my seeds sprouting, like, fast, then I get really irritated. I'm like, come on, it's time to have some green. But for the instance with rosemary and lavender, that takes a while. It takes about 21 days before you actually see germination. But there are some tricks, like both of those really like bottom heat. Um, some seeds, so if you have a heat mat, and, it, and I always say, please get, you know, like an, a heat mat for growing plants so you don't, Put a heating pad under there and get it wet and electrocute yourself or something. You know, just invest in a good heat mat and it will last you forever. Um, so bottom heat, some seeds like that. Um, some need uh, light germinate, like lettuce, needs to be sown on top of the soil and just press gently into it so that it can germinate well. It needs to have that light. Some seeds need dark, so they need to either be not under light until they start to grow. Um, some need a stratification period or they need their seed um, coating nicked, which is scarification. So, you know, you just have to do a little research, see what that seed needs, and then you're good to go. I mean, but patience is the biggest thing. I was given trillium seeds one time, and I love them. They're beautiful wildflower. Two years before you see any growth. Do you know how aggravating that is? I'm like, I need a little bit of a reward here before I see, you know, a little bit of green coming out. So patience is a virtue, definitely. Great. So we're talking with Julie Thompson Adolph. She's an author and um, a, a blogger as well. Um, so what are some, what are seed bombs? What is the significance behind <laughs> seed bombs? Why are they becoming so popular? You see recipes. What's up with seed bombs? Seed bombs actually began quite a while ago in, with a Japanese um, gentleman made them really famous because he wanted to start kind of greening up some, you know, um, different areas that were um, empty lots or fields that he wanted to start growing vegetables. So seed bombs are basically just a method of dispersal where you can make a little ball, maybe about a little smaller than maybe a golf size, golf ball size um, little ball, and it's comprised of clay and some compost. And a lot of recipes, you know, include a lot of seeds to put in the seed bomb, but you have to think about the seeds. The seed doesn't want to be overcrowded while it's trying to grow. So I usually put in maybe four seeds. Excuse me. And I think that the reason that they're so popular, you make them into this little ball and you let them dry, is that you can really involve your whole family. Or, you know, teachers can involve kids in doing this, too. Kids love getting in there, doing crafty projects, and then you can take them back. You basically make these little balls. You can stick them in your pocket, take them with you. If you see an empty lot, an abandoned field, um, you just drop them. Or if you see like a, an ugly urbanized area that no one, you don't see anyone owning that, that area, you can kind of lob them over a fence. And then, you know, when spring comes and the, the little ball starts breaking down with the rain and the weather, you can take those kids back and say, look what you did. Look at those little flowers that are growing over there in that little vacant lot now. So it's really just a fun project. You have to be a little bit careful. You don't ever want to include any invasive species in sea bombs because that's just asking for trouble. Don't throw them on people's properties. You know, you have to use a little common sense, but it's a really fun project to do. And you can even, you know, make them as gifts for, we've done it before for, you know, ants and kind of teachers and things like that. So be smart about it. Just don't lob things of invasive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So we talked about the seed saving and the starting. Would you rec would you encourage a gardener of any level to start their own seeds, or would you encourage them to buy starts at the uh, garden center? What what would you say is better? I would say that there's a good mix. Honestly, there are some seeds that are hard to start when you're just getting started, and you don't want to get frustrated. So I would start with things that are a little bit easy. Basil, so easy to grow and so inexpensive to grow tons of pots of basil to have for the whole summer. Um, when you start talking about, like, tomatoes and peppers, you have to invest in a little bit more time and learn a little bit more about them. But then you have such a huge variety open to you. So, you know, yes, maybe you need to buy a heat mat and, you know, some some ways to get that all started and some lights because lights are super expensive. Or not super expensive, super important, sorry very inexpensive 
to set up just some grow lights, very easy, $20 project in my book to set up a little light station. But I think the biggest um, thing is you know exactly how those plants have been raised if you grow seeds by yourself. Um, you know that if you are into organic, then those seeds have been, you know, by organic seeds, raise them organically. There's no um, chemicals involved, whereas, you know, the garden centers, you don't always know. Even if they're marked organic, you know, the folks that work there sometimes at the big box stores don't necessarily treat their plants as you and I would treat our plants. So. I think that's really a great thing to be able to start them. I used to actually sell at the farmer's market, too. I would take my excess because, you know, I'm the kind of person that had to grow 184 varieties of tomatoes one year because I wanted to try them all, and I sold them at the farmer's market. So it also gives you a little extra cash in your pocket, too. It's a lot of fun. That's great. Now, Julie, um, where can people find you, your blog, your book, et cetera? Sure. Um, my book is online, Amazon, um, in bookstores, Barnes & Noble online, lots of different online options. Uh, my blog and my Instagram account are both Julie's Garden Delight, and I'm on Twitter and Facebook, both at Garden Delight. Well, Julie, we greatly appreciate you coming on the program uh, and sharing your, your knowledge about saving, starting and saving seeds with all of us. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Appreciate your time. When we come back, it's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color weather resistant energy efficient to save on that heating cost mix and match with glazings to suit your climate sturdy and durable they'll hold up to those heavy snow loads they'll even add them to homes for agricultural to lodging to entertaining it's a great addition to any garden or landscape check them out at wisconsin greenhouse company The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Mm-hmm. 
Natural Healing Ointment, USDA Certified Organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for, annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Philo Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. You got a question? Certainly send us a text on the Instant Access IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard Hotline. And that's 414 368 9311. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. So we've got several questions that have come in via social media platforms and uh, email twvgshow at gmail.com, that, the whole deal there. Uh, what is required to grow asparagus? I'm considering to do such but have no clue about it. Where would I purchase starts or whatever you call them? Well, they're, first they're of all, they're called crowns. crowns. Yep, and you can purchase them at your local garden center. You can also start your own, but I believe that's more difficult. Yeah, it takes about yeah. a two to three year process to start them and mm-hmm. to get them established. A crown you can get as a one year crown or a two year crown. If you purchase as a two year crown at your garden center, plant it this year. You will be able to harvest off of it next year. So if you want it sooner than later, you want the two-year crown. And when you plant them, you they have like this root system that's kind of spread out like an octopus-ish type thing. And you want to make sure you spread those roots out when you plant them. Because what will happen is those roots will shoot under the ground and then they'll shoot up asparagus. Now, asparagus is a, per, uh, an an, uh, a perennial. It will last forever. Uh, we're talking 20 to 50 years in one spot. So if you have a lot of area or you have a specific area in which you want to turn into a non-effort uh, garden, there is a little bit of work that goes in with asparagus. But 30, 20 to 50 years, you can have asparagus growing. Right, that's correct. So we got another question. Uh, Sheer from Michigan asks, I would love a great seed-saving option. I use a shoebox and I use a banker's box. The seed packet packets fall to the bottom. Uh, the mice seem to like the manila envelopes. Um, if I if they eat the vanilla envelopes, I put I put those little silica gel packets in there, and then I want to be able to label them. What what can I do? So well, here's here's what you can do. I, I did some research, and they're not associated with us or anything. But you go on Amazon and you search uh, four by six photo and craft keeper extra large clear. You'll get a really neat box that have individual little pocket or individual little plastic. Uh, capsules in which your seed packet can set in, and it's all organized, it's all pretty, nothing's falling. Every packet of seed or group of packets of seeds sets in a clip or in a, in a little closed uh, envelope, plastic envelope inside of the giant uh, tray there. So that, that will work out really, really well for you. And you can experiment. Uh, everybody's got their own unique seed start or seed saving techniques. And you want something that works for you that you're going to be able to find the seeds for them uh, in, inside the, your searching form. So if you have a question, show at gmail.com is your best avenue to reach us. And let us know where you are listening to the show from so we can better address your question. Just like Becky asked, I'm from the Milwaukee area. I had tomato hornworms last year. How do I prevent that from happening again? Well, here's what you can do. We've fired 
have fought tomato hornworms in the past. Tomato hornworms lay their larvae in the fall at a determined depth in the soil. So by disturbing the soil either late in the fall or as soon as you can get the soil to be worked here in the spring, you're going to reduce your chances of, re, of the return of tomato hornworms by about 90%. If you're able to find, and I have been able to dig up a larva, it looks like a monarch butterfly cocoon in the soil. You want to destroy it. You don't want to make it a pet or anything like that. So you want to get rid of it. And then uh, whether you till your soil or you choose to spade it, whatever the case is, disrupting that larva will put it in a uh, level in which it's not designed to survive and uh, will greatly reduce the chance of getting tomato hornworm this year. Uh, Also, moving your tomatoes from one location to another location will help detour that uh, opportunity for invitation of the hornworm again, too. Got time for one more question. What would you recommend, a metal watering can or a plastic watering can? Well, we use both. There are positives and negatives to both. Positive to the metal can, it doesn't deteriorate through the sun as a plastic one would if you leave it out for a long time. Obviously, the metal one will rust. The plastic one plastic one will not. The thing that I would be encouraging you to look at when it comes to a watering can is get one with a detachable sprinkler head. That way, if particles get stuck in the sprinkling head or the sprinkler head, you can remove it. You don't have to beat around on it and try to tip it out. We've got a metal watering can that does not provide us with that uh, removal option. So the pros and cons to both. But uh, make sure you get one with a detachable, uh, unscrew, uh, screwable off and on sprinkler head. You also want to be aware of the volume that the watering can will hold and how much you're capable of carrying. Just because it's a pretty three-gallon watering can, if you can't lift the three-gallon watering can because of whatever reason, doesn't do you much good. So keep that in mind as well. Well, we are out of time on the program today. We always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Milwaukee, Southeast Michigan, and Philadelphia, and everybody in between. Before we get to what's coming up next week, first I want to make mention. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. So coming up next week on the program, do not miss it. Tell your friends, tell your family, tune in. We're going to talk about planning and planting your garden for this year. Also, we're going to go over five things you need to consider before you build or buy a greenhouse of large or small size. We're talking about ones that would actually go out in the backyard, not little ones that you would have in your house. Plus, Vincent Simeone will be with us. He is the author of Grow More with Less. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it or our past seasons, there's a couple of options in which you can do that uh, by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and clicking under the radio tab for this season, for 2019, or you want to revisit the past seasons, look under the Season 1 and 2 tab. Also, you can just go to your favorite podcast-providing website and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, and you'll find all of our episodes. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird. We will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.